Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here. So today I want to talk about Magma Studio. This is a free application that you can try out yourself. Our hopes and dreams with this application making it is really to bring together people in a wonderful collaborative way to bring together people to make some art. Go to magmastudio.io, click on try Magma Studio for free. Now I already logged in, it might ask you to sign up. I would recommend creating an account because when you have an account, then you can also become the administrator of the board. As you can see, I'm the administrator currently. From here, what you should do is just test to see if you have pressure sensitivity. Can you make a big brush stroke and a little one? Now, if you can't, the first question that I ask is, are you using Chrome? If you use Google Chrome, that can take away a lot of the issues that people might have if they're using Safari or Firefox or something like that. Chrome definitely seems to be the best. Also, if you go up to the button here with the three icons and you go to help, there's also an extension for Chrome that could help with uh, your pressure sensitivity. The other thing about this page is that if you scroll down, you can see all the shortcuts keyboard hotkeys and shortcuts. Okay, and it also has any other known issues that you might have. The other way to fix it is if you're using a Wacom tablet, go to your pen, and then from your pen, go to calibrate. Down here we have a little checked off thing here that says use Windows Ink. If it wasn't checked on, check it on, and then restart the browser, close the browser completely, open it back up, and you should be good to go. Now the other thing I want to bring your attention to is edit application settings. This has all of the shortcuts for anybody that really loves to personalize their software. Also go up to your name and then here you can set your name. Currently I have these settings because I already have an account but I could set my name I could change my avatar. On the left hand side we also have tools. The first one is move. The second one and the third one are marquee tools. A rectangular marquee tool and an ellipse marquee tool. Then we have the lasso tool. Then we have a transform tool. So say I did a shape and I got the lasso tool. If I went to transform, now I can transform that as well. Go into the corners to rotate. Go onto a different tool to get out of transform. And then you can also press control D to deselect. And we have the eyedropper, the pencil, the brush, the eraser, the paint bucket, and different symbols, a rectangular symbol, circular symbol, the move tool, where you're moving the whole entire canvas, the rotate tool, where you're rotating the canvas, and then zooming in, zooming out. Okay, now this icon right here, if you just click down and drag, then you can zoom in and out. A lot of times what we do in Photoshop is we press control minus or control plus or command minus or command plus for Mac. But as you know, if you press control plus or control minus in a browser, it tends to enlarge everything, including the buttons, including the fonts. So we've disabled that. And how you zoom in and out is you hold down the letter Z and you click down with your pen and drag left and right and then you can easily zoom in and out. Now I want to bring your attention to this top row here. This is undo, this is redo, zoom in and out, and this is flip the canvas. However, when you're flipping the canvas, only you see the canvas flip, which is a wonderful uh, tool there, a wonderful feature, because all these features, they revolve around collaboration, and that's how this program is different. Okay, we have the rotate tool again, and then we have the set back to normal kind of rotate button there. Now I'd love to bring your attention to the right hand side. We have the color wheel where we have the hue, the saturation and value. We have these six different brushes. Currently we don't have any custom brushes yet, but it definitely is on the horizon. Now what are these for? Say I have settings on my brush that I really like, and now I need to change brush settings but I know that I want to come back to these brush settings. So I could just click on a different brush and now I can tweak my brush settings however I want and then I could always go back to that original one. Down here we have size. 
you can see that this button is clicked on, which means that size will be affected by pen pressure. Just like how over here, density will be affected by pen pressure. Now size, this is pretty self-explanatory. How big is your brush? How small is your brush? Minimum size is the minimum size of your brush if you're pressing really lightly. Density is pretty much the same as flow in Photoshop. It's how quick does the paint come out of your brush. And you can have a little bit more sensitivity with that by clicking this on so that there's a brush icon inside saying that the pen pressure will also affect the density. Next to that, we have opacity. How see-through is your paint? Hardness, how soft or hard are your brush strokes? Then we have stabilizer. This controls how smooth your brush strokes will be. Then we have a little line here dividing the color stuff, the brush options, from the layer options. Starting off with opacity. Now opacity, that is controlling the opacity of the elements on your layer. We also have this button right here, which is, if we click on it, a little icon appears, a lock icon. This is lock transparency. Okay, just like in Photoshop, sometimes you want to put down your base tone, your block in, and then you want to freely paint over top, painting in details, but you don't want to have to worry about painting outside of that shape. Underneath that, we have normal. This is your blend modes. After that, we have leave. How this program works is that you can all collaborate together, but you cannot paint on a layer that's owned by somebody else. You can see an indication of a color on the side here, that means that this person with that orange color owns that layer. If there are multiple artists on this document, you would see multiple colors. Anything that's gray means that it's free. And in order for you to take over a free layer, you could just double click on it. And now you can see that both of these layers have the color orange. If I want to leave this layer, that's when this button comes in handy. I can now leave the layer and now somebody else can take it over and paint on that layer. And that's how you would be able to actually collaborate painting on the same layer. The next button here is a duplicate layer button. So now I just made a copy. I'm going to undo that and then go to the next layer and then go to the next button. I'm going to undo that and then I'm going to go to the new layer button. And that's how you create a new layer. After that, we have the lock button. This means that you have locked the layer completely. I cannot paint, draw inside the layer is locked. The next button here is a crooked arrow button, kind of looking like what we call parenting a layer to another layer in like Photoshop, where you, again, you don't want to paint outside of your block in. However, you might want to keep certain things still separated from your block in. Well, this is a wonderful way to do that because you can have all of that green element there separated from everything else, but you still don't have to worry about keeping the paint inside the lines, so to speak. Next button here is clear. Next button after that is kind of like a merge button. But when I press on it, you can see that all of the green will be transferred underneath, yet my layer remains there. Okay, so everything did merge. However, I still have my layer there. Now, if that's too odd for you, what you could do is you could press on the other button here. The scissors with the crooked arrow, that is just like the merge that we all probably know where those layers have now merged into one. And over here we have the trash can. Down here we have a chat built in. And there you go. Now you should be all set. Hashtag Magma Studio app. And we could all share our artwork together. If you're joining us from Discord, this is how it works. There's a few different halls here. And what you want to do is you want to look for the hall that interests you the most. Each one is on a different topic, concept art, fine art, animation, etc. The very first hall, Hall A, this is going to be filled with a lot of VIP artists. They will be entering in these different voice chats and then drawing together. You can draw with them on the exact same board. In the other halls, you can chat amongst each other by joining these different voice chats. And then you can go here, click on the link, and that will open up one of these drawing boards. And then you could take this link and paste it into the draw together section. That way everybody can draw along with you. And then you could join one of these voice chats to chat with everybody that's drawing with you.